He's like, right, I'm so sorry yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. No, no, he's, 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 we're gonna, yeah. All right, go ahead. Going into Photoshop and putting images on your body was the first version of me mocking up a t-shirt. Before I knew that's what I was doing, that's what I was doing. It was the same skill set. I mean, the shoulder. This one is like, this was not sprayed enough. Yeah. So I don't even know if that's a reference. What do you think, Chris? So originally it was just, we wanted cool silhouettes, we wanted cool colors, a cool bomber, uh, like a nice letterman or like a cool pair of jeans. And we didn't have access to make those from the ground up. And so us repurposing vintage was us kind of making a shortcut early on. And then after sort of just putting those ideas out there and seeing the reception of them, it became something where we we're like, okay, we're gonna feature this frequently. The name Basket Case stems from the admiration that I have for creatives that I have always looked up to that never really fit in to the traditional societal mold and it freed them in their pursuit of creating amazing and beautiful things. concept of basket case is like somebody who completely doesn't give a shit about what anyone thinks and they're creating for the sake of creativity. So it's this nod to like this very infantile, raw approach to creativity of just like, this is what I made because I like it. Sometimes the title of a collection will just be like how I was feeling for the four weeks of like, this is how I felt when I made all these clothes, but it might not have a ton of synergy in like a visual way, but just preserving like the titling integrity is a cool way to bring people in deeper. I think we will always want to pay homage to like really iconic silhouettes. So like vintage denim, Letterman jackets, uh, work jackets, work pants, stuff that has aged well and been able to dress like both functionally and stylistically over the span of like what is like formative American fashion, I guess. Like those products have worked in 1940 and also in 2020. So I feel like that kind of like, like the idea of not overcomplicating and trying to be the first brand to ever introduce this new idea of a jacket has been sort of like a, a cornerstone of how we approach design. Our process is every single month we start from scratch, try and formatively start from scratch to get a collection finished in about three weeks. We design like a hip hop producer would do sampling. 
which is like picking through a million different records and playing them and choosing a 10 second aspect and looping it over and over again, will approach old magazines and yearbooks, um, vintage clothing, and sift through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these um, already done ideas and so sort of try and create gray area between two of them. Man, I don't even know about the cult following thing. I used to try and explain to people who my consumer was. I was like, yeah, man, I'm making clothes for like the cool hipster that like is the friend in the friend group that's like the first one that's onto the music and has a film camera and he like puts everyone on but like doesn't want other people to tell them about the new things that he found or is like, but also obsessed with finding vintage or has these weird niche interests where he like knows everything and all the details behind it. Um, and I would say like, this is who my audience is, da 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 da, -da. And I would, before we had had any sort of like ground level success. And that whole time, all I was doing was describing to people myself. Um, and to me, it just feels like our audience is a bunch of people that are kind of like me. And they like, they like good photography, they like timeless design ideas, and um, they like that we try and treat every single person like a human being, like family.